Okay, hello everyone. Um, I will be doing a talk today about your admin. It's a Golang library that was um, developed and open sourced by um, Integratinet, the company that I work for. So, uh, my name is Abdullah Rashid. I'm the CTO of um, Integratinet. I will uh, be doing an introduction about the library and I will be doing a live coding demo to uh, present the library. New admin um, is a fully functional uh, web framework. Um, why would we, why would anyone go and build a new web framework? Um, in our company, we used to prototype all of our applications in um, Python using Django. Then go, then after we finish prototyping something, we go and rebuild the whole thing again in Golang for production. Um, that was time consuming and it was redoing the original work and the original prototype is, um, does not really help you uh, progress uh, into production. Um, you admin was uh, our way of reducing our development cycle so we can start prototyping directly in Golang instead of um, prototyping something in a different uh, language, which also, um, which also required us to work twice with new developers where we have to teach them uh, Python and a different uh, framework, then we have to teach them again how to use uh, Golang. Uh, we started uh, developing this back in 2016 and um, we decided to open source it in uh, 2018. Um, it's available on uh, GitHub right now under MIT license. Uh, as I said earlier, it was uh, developed and open source by Integrated Net Solutions and Services. It's a technology company in the Philippines that um, specializes mostly in hospitality solutions and um, uh, operates multiple other businesses, including an internet service provider. So uh, we have one of the um, uh, Turco licenses in the Philippines. Getting started um, to install the library, it's uh, just a standard uh, command. It's like installing any Golang library. You go uh, go get GitHub that comes slash your admin slash your admin slash dot dot dot. The slash dot 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 part is really important because it installs your the CLI tools, the command line tools. Um, second important step because of uh, the new module system, you will have to clone the library into your SRC folder. Uh, so git clone uh, HTTPS github.com slash admin slash admin. So clone the library into your uh, source folder, into your SRC folder. Um, to start a new application, make a new folder and run this one command, which is your admin prepare. Uh, the library is built around the MVT architecture, which utilizes three parts, M for model, V for view, and T for template. So um, user is communicating with the, with the view part of your application, your model and template are feeding the view with data and design to generate user interface. Um, to break down the MVT architecture model deals with the database. So it isolates that part. Uh, if you ever change database or you change uh, um, database connection, database style, database system that you're using, you really don't have to touch anything else in your application. Um, and the model contains your business logic. You link your business logic directly to the model. An example of that would be um, if you have uh, 
we have a task management uh, system. Um, the task itself will have any um, business logic related to the task directly. If you want to notify someone's, uh, if you want to have notifications about um, deadlines coming soon, you create that logic inside the, um, the task model. Um, v, uh, which is the view, um, it processes the user requests and responses, so it deals with the, the HTTP requests and responses. It generates the UI based on the um, templates, and it implements the API, so the application uh, programming interface is implemented inside the view. Template, um, it's where you keep your UI design, uh, so where you design your HTML uh, user interface, and where you implement all of your JavaScript um, client-side um, programming, including your AJAX, um, including your AJAX that deals with the server to fetch uh, data and to render the UI on the client side. The great thing about uh, MV, um, MVT architecture, as it relates to your admin, it isolates your database operation, uh, operations from the rest of your application, modularize your application into separate models, um, links the business logic directly to the models, it facilitates large development teams to work together on the same project because they can be working on different models or they can be or in different parts of the view. And it allows your front-end developers to work with a predictable API uh, where they don't have to get back to back-end developers to ask them um, to ask them about uh, what kind of API, what uh, should I be expecting in return for uh, X or Y. They, there is a built-in um, automatically generated API based on your models called the API in your admin. So uh, uh, the features that we implemented in your admin, I broke them down into separate um, groups of features. The list is uh, too long to list in one place. I will start with uh, some uh, general features. We have a, uh, authentication and permission system um, built in uh, in your admin. Um, database is a schema migration. You never have to deal with um, with database migration or schema or separate script or separate system altogether to uh, handle your uh, database uh, schema migrations. Um, it will uh, export. It has export to Excel feature, which exports your data directly into um, Excel SX um, format. Uh, it has uh, multilingual uh, support where you can do um, uh, multilingual UI and even multilingual data. So you can um, have, uh, for example, um, a name for something, but that one, that uh, name of the, for example, if you're doing a product management system and you want to be able to have the name of the product show up in different languages, that will be possible. You can actually have a multilingual uh, field inside your database. Um, system settings, uh, it manages uh, a lot of um, system behavior through um, system settings. And the user can also, uh, and the developer also can create their own settings. So you don't have to go and implement a different system just to keep track of your settings. Um, validation for user input. You have um, you have validation system, back end validation, and front end uh, validation, and it's all built in into your um, model uh, design. So you don't have to go and build a new validation system. Security, uh, which is very big deal for us. Um, we have SSL support, of course. We have HTTP 2.0 support. Um, um, uh, we have uh, setting data encryption, so encryption within your database, so we can encrypt your data before it goes to the database. Um, we have bcrypt hashing for your uh, credentials, for your passwords. 
we have um, hash salt, uh, very secure hash salt. Um, we have password reset uh, feature that's built in into um, the framework, so you don't have to go implement something from scratch in there. And we have two-factor authentication um, that uses uh, standard uh, two-factor authentication uh, systems. So you, you can implement that to uh, per user to allow for different levels of um, security for different users. Um, once you generate your models, you will automatically get um, an API. We call it the API, the Data Access API. It's generated automatically from your models. Um, it has a pre-request and, uh, and post-request uh, handling. So if you want to do any filtering uh, per user, for example, you can decide the user will only get their data when they do an API request. So you can um, do that in the pre-request or you can add extra filters to make sure they only get their own data. And there is post request handling. Imagine if you want to, um, I don't know, uh, make any, um, make some field uh, uh, asterisks instead of, um, instead of showing the actual content of these fields like passwords or something like this. Uh, I don't advise you to store plain text passwords, but if you have something similar to that and you want to post process to remove any of this data, you can do that actually in your post request. And there is a per model pre request and post request uh, method. So you can implement that per model. There is a full logging system. So you will get full logs uh, for every request that came into your system. Um, there is a per model per request permission for the uh, for the API calls. So you can customize the permissions per model. So if there is a secure model that you don't want it, you don't want to be available through the API, you can definitely do that. And you can also customize it per request. So you can decide to get the request, uh, figure out who's the user in there and uh, decide to give them access or not based on their uh, based on which model they're accessing or based on which user is trying to access that model. These are just um, like a wish list features that we added based on um, uh, requests from uh, developers using uh, UAdmin, mostly people within our team. So we added A-B testing. Um, A-B testing is fully implemented there. You can, you can see click-through rates and you can uh, test different ideas directly from within the framework. There is a full approval system in there. So let's say you have a field where you don't want the changes in that field to uh, go directly into the system until you until someone with higher permission, for example, goes and approves the changes or approves uh, um, any uh, data input in a specific field. Um, this, is, uh, this is just another one of these uh, features that uh, we decided to add in there because people uh, liked it. We have image cropping. What you see is what you get editor built into the system. We have email support so you can send out emails. We have webcam support, which is one of the really cool features we have in there um, that will make um, development easier for you. Um, I will, uh, all of this will make way more sense once uh, you start seeing this live. So I will do a quick uh, demo where I will be building um, a task management system where I can just keep track of some uh, tasks. So I will, uh, I'm using Vim in here, so you can you can use any editor you like. I'm just using Vim because uh, uh, it's uh, what I use actually for work. So I will uh, I will start by just making a directory. Um, Mkdir is the CLI command to make a new directory. I could have done it from Finder, but uh, just want you to see the whole process uh, in here. So I'll just call it uh, to do. So this is my to do list. I'll go cd to do. Then I will prepare this folder, your admin, 
prepare. Prepare will generate a um, few folders for me. It will create a models folder, an API folders, views, media, static, and templates. Um, and it will copy all the static uh, content that I will need for my application. If I do LS, I can see the six um, folders that I have in here. To actually start um, developing anything, I will um, I will just I will just do this and open a new tab. Then I will go vim main dot go. So this is where I'm starting the actual development of this application. Uh, vim gives me this um, template uh, like a boilerplate, but I really don't need most of it. So I will import the library github.com slash admin slash admin and I will just delete this uh, line and I need two commands to start my application. I need uadmin that register. This is where I'll be registering later my um, my models. Then uadmin that start server. That's it. I just need two commands to um, to um, run this application. Uh, now I'm going back to um, I'm going back to my folder and I will go build which will compile my uh, application. Oh, sorry. You have to go and uh, initialize your mod. It's the new module, the system in uh, Golang. So go mod init, then I will do GitHub. Uh, you just uh, name your application, github.com. Uh, just this hardware, that's my username on GitHub, and I will call it to do. And go mod tidy you have to do this whenever you add a new um, dependency to your application um, if you're not familiar with the modules you uh, if you use all the versions of uh, uh, golang and you're not familiar with uh, modules these are the two main commands that you will have to remember go mod init and go mod tidy i will build my application now go build and it's uh, building and now I can run my application. It uh, just a quick um, uh, a quick thing in here, so you understand what's happening in here. It initialized thirteen models for me, so it initialized the database already. I didn't have to go create a database or uh, create any scheme in there. It initialized all the languages. We have one hundred eighty five built in languages. It created a username and password for me. Admin admin username and password. Make sure you change that before you go to production. Um, it synchronized system settings and created a server for me on localhost uh, 8080. So I will go in here and I will do this. Um, this is the UI for the application. I can go admin, admin, and log in. Uh, and you can see I have a few models in here now. Um, where um, these are all system models. Uh, none of these are um, um, anything that I created right now inside my application. These are all the system models. So besides this, what I want to do now is I want to start developing my model. Um, I could just uh, create my model in here. It's in production. It's uh, better to create your models inside your models folder. But just for um, uh, keeping this simple, I will create my model here, type, I'll call it task. So uh, this is the model that I'm creating. To tell the system that this is a model, I will have to do you add in that model. Um, the fields that I need in this uh, model, I will need a name for this model, which is going to be a string. Then I will need a um, description, for example, this description. And it's also a string. What else would I need in a task? I would need a deadline, which is time the time. Let me import time since I'm using it. And I guess, uh, I guess I can add one more thing. I'll call it progress. 
and I'll make it just a float 64 so I can keep track of my progress. Uh, let me save that. Now after, I, now after I created my model, I have to register my model in the system. The way I register it, I just add it inside register. So I pass all my models that I want to register in the system inside register by just calling it this. Adding task in here inside the register function. If I had more models, I can, I would eventually be adding them in here inside the register. Now, now I can go back, stop my server. I will, I will add the part that builds the language and the part that runs my application on the same line. So we don't have to do these two processes and two uh, different steps. Um, just recompile my application. Now, if I refresh the page in here, I will see I have a new model inside my system called task. I can now go in here, just bring this one down and new task. And you can see that I have a form in here where I can uh, input my, uh, a new task. I'll call this task, uh, for example, uh, make a uh, description, um, uh, deadline, I'll just make the deadline in sometime today. I'll just call it, yeah, I'll just call it uh, today at noon. The progress that I've done so far in making T is zero, so I'll just save this as is. And now we can see I have one task in here. I could go and add more tasks. I would add another task called make coffee. Um, others like coffee. Uh, so I have to uh, deadline because this is a task that I don't really like. I'll just make it, I don't know, sometime after noon today. And my progress is still zero there. So now I have two tasks in my task uh, management. A few things that I don't really like in here. What if I want to add multiple lines in my description and make it more descriptive? Uh, it would be much nicer if I can make this into like um, an HTML field. So what I will do is I can go back to my application and let's start customizing our model. Uh, so. To make a field into an HTML field, you add a tag. Um, it's, a, it's how you add more description to something in, um, in Godan. So we have our own custom tag called you admin, and I will pass HTML. And now you admin HTML uh, is the tag that I added to description. If I save this, and recompile and rerun my application. I should be able to see how this works. If I open this again, now my description is a what you see what is what you get a field where I can add multiple lines. I can add more formatting in here. Uh, make this centered, bold, change the font size. And now it's uh, now it's an HTML editor instead of um, instead of just a text field. Let me save this to keep that in system. Um, one more thing, I really don't have a way to search in here. To um, if I ended up with the more tasks, it will be really hard to start searching uh, by just uh, scrolling down to to find my uh, tasks. So the way we add uh, search capability to anything, I will add it in here. Um, I want to search by name, your admin, and the tag for that is called search. I save, and recompile and rerun my application. I should be able to and let me go back here in tasks. I should be able to see that I have a search um, uh, field in here. And it's like an instant search, so I don't have to really click enter or anything. If I search for T, 
it will find any thing with the T in the task. And if I search for uh, coffee, yeah, I would. And I don't have to write the whole thing. As I start writing, it will find anything with uh, with that. If I search for the word make, it will find everything with make, which is both of them. Um, how do I search in multiple fields? Because right now I'm searching in name, but I'm not really searching in description. So if I do something like um, uh, the word like, it will not find anything. I think I added ASDF in here, ASDF. Yeah, I, I'm not able to find anything right now inside the description field. I, you could add as many fields to your search as you want. Um, so this is my description. I go semicolon, search. So now this field is also searchable. The description field is also searchable. You can see how I'm adding multiple tags using a semicolon within the same, um, within for the same field. Now for description, I have two tags, HTML and search. So it's an HTML field that's also searchable. Um, let me recompile my application. And now if I refresh, I can start searching for ASDF and it will find ASDF inside um, the description. Now it's searching in both the name and description. Um, one thing I don't like in here, the progress is just a number. So let's say I've, I'm making progress uh, into my um, tea making uh, process or coffee making process. Let's say I'm, uh, I'm at, I don't know, at 30% right now. And I will just see the number 30, but it really doesn't tell me much beyond that it's 30. I would like something a bit visual in here. Um, we have actually a data type for that called progress bar. So I could go in here, do admin. Uh, Progress bar. If I save now, I'll go back in here. Oh, I have to recompile my application. Yeah, and if I recompile my application and run it again, now I can see that I have a progress bar for each of uh, my processes. I really don't like this blue color. It doesn't tell me much. I could also customize the color of my progress bar. I could do something like this. I could do uh, up to, I don't know, up to 40% make it red and um, 80 make it line. That's a comma. That's a comma. And I can recompile my application. And if I run it again now, now it's red. If this goes to, for example, 90%, I should start seeing lime in here. I think I get something good in here, yeah. Uh, it goes 100 line. So anything beyond 40% will show line. Uh, let me recompile my application again. And now we can see 90% is line. If I was at lower level, let's say something like 30, it will go red. I could add a third one to make it yellow somewhere in the middle. Uh, actually, let's do that. That will be that will be fun to do. Um, I will add uh, like until we reach I don't know uh, seventy percent, seventy percent make it yellow. By the way, these colors you can use uh, you can use uh, RGB uh, representation or any of the CSS um, colors, the built-in CSS colors. Um, let me recompile that one more time. And now if I refresh in here, 30% uh, gives me red 
anything beyond 40 let's call it 50 percent is yellow and anything beyond 70 percent or i think it was 70 percent yeah it will give me lime so i can visually see how um, what's my progress in each one of my tasks so visually i can see that this is red and this is green very quickly but i'm developing that um, I could now add more things in here. I will add a way to um, attach some files inside my uh, inside my task. Let's say I want to um, want to be able to attach a document or something to the task, so I can call it uh, attachment. And the way you add um, files file upload capability into your admin. We have two of them. We have an image and we have file. But I will just make it a generic. Um, uh, um, no, uh, let, let's try. Uh, let's try image action. Your admin image and recompile my application and go back in here. So open task. Now we have attachment. I can. Make coffee, uh, browse. Um, don't know where I can find anything like an image or something like this. Um, okay, I'll just upload my portal. Save, and now I have my photo in here. I could open my photo, I could crop my photo. Um, could go and crop my photo, um, crop, and now the, um, the image that I'm using is just the cropped uh, image. So um, you can, you don't have to pre-process your images before you upload them. It will, uh, it, it, you will be able to receive the images and you can process them inside you admin a little bit of pre-processing your images. And there is one other um, feature in here. You can actually, if uh, usually with the people with cell phones, they will upload like a 5 MB file for you with like 24 megapixels or something like this. It, these images are way too large to uh, keep on your server or to use in any web application related uh, things. So what do we do in new admin? We actually resize uploaded images. Um, so your uploaded images will not uh, be too large. So that's uh, that's what we're uh, that's what we have uh, right now for our tasks. And as you can see, I'm uh, adding new tasks. I can search. I can. Um, I can edit them. There is so many data types. It's all documented on uh, on GitHub. Uh, there is a full documentation there. A um, couple of features that I want to talk about is filter. So if I want to filter things right now, I see no filters in here. Uh, the way I can implement filters, I can go in here, and let's say I want to add a filter by the deadline. So. Again, it's a tag, your admin, filter. Usually these tags are exactly what you expect them to do. So the word filter will give you a filter. They compile. And now if I refresh in here again, uh, yeah, if I refresh, refresh my API, I can go over here to filter and I can see deadline. Uh, anytime I can see, just look up things with the deadline today, um, past seven days, this month, last month, this year. And you can see the the format in here is pretty clear. It's deadline underscore underscore GTE greater than or equal to. And I'm just passing a, tie, a, a date in here. You can make it a date time. Um, so you can customize, you can create any custom um, URL and to work exactly as you expect. So uh, 
let's say I would like to create a custom uh, UI, which is not something that I will be doing right now, uh, but I just want to touch on um, how would we go about that. So now I have my model called tasks and I would like to access this data, but not through this UI. I would like to get some kind of API for it. So let's say I'm developing an iPhone and Android app for it or a custom UI. And I would like to access now this through HTTP requests and JSON. Um, I'll go localhost slash API slash D. So for data. And if I just enter in here, you will see that there is a full documentation about how this um, part of the system works. The, your API, this is a full documentation of how your API works. So the way it works, model name, then some kind of a command. We have read, add, edit, delete, and schema. And something that gives me all models, dollar sign all models. So I can go task slash read. And I will see that result. And I have two things uh, inside my result. Two objects, ID one, deleted at equals null. Name, make T, description, deadline, progress, attachment. And you can see how this can, um, how this works. I could add more things. I could do slash one. It will give me the, it will give me only the result with the ID one. Or I can use, so this is a fetch one uh, feature and I can do fetch multi. So um, I could do where um, ID equals one, which will return it in um, into a, this uh, format which is an array because now i can do something like where name um contains t and it's unable to find anything with the name contains t let me see make oh because i capitalized the word t okay it's small but let's say I want to do a case insensitive thing. I can do T and it will not be able to find it. And I can do I contains, which is case insensitive and it will still be able to find it. Um, all of these uh, underscore underscore functions like uh, contains, I contains is all well documented inside uh, your the API. Uh, so you can see in here contains um, search uh, string value that uh, that uh, contains uh, something, and I contains is uh, case insensitive, um, and there is uh, there there are a lot of features in here like limit and offsets if you want to do pagination, there are aggregation um, functions some average minimum maximum account. Uh, you can go in here to our read the docs page and see the complete uh, documentation of this whole thing. Um, you can do ordering, ascending, descending. Uh, you can check deleted um, items. You can group by, you can do, um, you can do uh, M2M uh, um, uh, queries. You can do just a queue thing, which will search all searchable fields. Um, uh, uh, the array of things in here is uh, is large, so you can do a lot of things with uh, this. Uh, order is for sorting. You can do ascending, descending. Uh, the filters you have in here are uh, there are so many um, so many of them. Um, that's uh, for the most part. This is everything that I would I have the time for you today. Um, and I will be uh, I will I will be doing uh, one of these uh, meetups uh, uh, on a weekly basis. So uh, we should uh, we should be able to get uh, more speakers up for the next time. Um, today it was just me. I literally just created this group a couple of days ago. Um, uh, I'm happy to have um, a couple of uh, people in here today, and. Um, Thank you, uh, thank you for coming. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, does anyone have any questions?
Okay, I guess we're then done in here. Um, you can reach out to me on um, can reach out to me on uh, both um, uh, on the GitHub repo if you have any issues in there, or you can find me on um, on Twitter also at Twisted Hardware. Um, um, I'm available on both and I uh, will be happy to answer your questions um, um, uh, there. Anyway, thank you guys and I will see you next week.